Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our radian and degree measure. Hopefully you're watching this video after we did our activity in class. That'll be the uh, best help to you. So some of the terms that we actually started uh, using in class, we talked about things like uh, when you draw an angle, every angle has an initial side and a terminal side. And the way these are written, and also every angle has a vertex, the vertex being right here. Um, color vertex being right here. That's your standard way of drawing, uh, actually that's not, that is one way to draw an angle. And what I want to focus on is what we are going to draw angles in this class, we are going to draw them in standard position. And standard position of an angle means the initial side is always drawn as a ray pointing the, directly to the right. And that means your terminal side is then going to, like this would be approximately a 45 degree angle. Now, I've drawn a 45 degree angle, and yes, that's one way to measure it. I could also measure in the opposite direction. So this is obviously positive 45. What I've drawn in this opposite direction, that would be a negative 315. And if you're, in, if you're wondering, how did I get that? If you're wondering, how did I get negative 315 degrees? Well, I know that a full revolution is 360 degrees, and this portion from earlier, right here in green, that's 45, so the remainder has to be, um, so it does direction that you're traveling, if you're traveling counterclockwise, it's going to be positive, and if you're traveling clockwise, that's actually a negative message, that's a little, um, so just make sure that you know this outside is, if you measure in a clockwise fashion, it's a negative angle measure, if you measure counterclockwise, it's always going to be a positive measure. All right, so I think, um, Using a protractor to measure an angle, I don't think is uh, terribly complicated. Uh, you, you put, you place the the, the tr protractor right at the vertex, and you can see here this is approximately a 120 degree angle. But that's not what I'm so concerned with. What I'm more concerned with is, are there other ways to represent this same angle? And kind of piggyback, piggybacking off of what we had on the last slide, we already said yes, that's 120 degrees, positive 120. But if I measured in the clockwise fashion, I could call it negative 240. That would also be the same, exactly the same drawn angle written two different ways. And if those, if, so if that, those are two different ways to write the angle. Well, what if I wanted to go, I'm going to erase a bunch of this. What if I wanted to go a full revolution, that's 360 degrees, and then another 120 more. Well, 360 plus another 120 degrees is going to get us our total. You could call this angle 480 degrees, and Kelly, it would look... Kelly, please the main office. Kate, would you tell to the main office, please? Thank you. You could call it 480 degrees, and it would look exactly the same. So, these three angle measures... <coughs> excuse me. These three angle measures, 120, 480, negative 240, are called coterminal angles. Because when you draw them, they share the same initial and terminal side, meaning students, three ways to write it. Government will be meeting in 53C at this time. Student government is meeting in 53C. Okay. Thank so, you. on this slide, what is extremely important from today's activity, I hope you learned that one revolution is equal to 2 pi and that would be 2 pi radians. Now, normally we don't write out radians. Um, today, for, for, um, for emphasis, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about when we're, when we're working in radians. But essentially, a radian is one, the length of one radius wrapped around the circle. And it takes exactly what you should have seen in class, a little more than six, radian, ra uh, six radii to go completely around a circle. And what I mean by a little more than 6 is specifically 6.28 because that's 2 pi. It takes 2 pi radii of any circle to make one full revolution. It didn't matter the size of the circle. And so we have another way to measure 360 degrees is the same as 2 pi radians. All right. Well, if we ha so then now we're able to talk about this benchmark uh, a little bit more. So... I'm not so concerned with the definition for a radii or for a radian. I am super concerned that you know one revolution is 2 pi 
and that one revolution is 360 degrees. Okay, so we've already talked from the last slide, I flat out told you 360 degrees is 2 pi. Well, if 360 degrees is 2 pi, well then what's 180 degrees going to be in radians? I hope you're saying just pi radians. And a little bit of a check, well if 180 degrees is pi, well what do you think 90 degrees would be in radians? And that would be half pi or pi over 2. Two different ways to write it, so pi over 2 or 1 pi over 2. Well, what do you think 45 degrees would be? Well, if 90 degrees is pi over 2, 45 degrees would be uh, pi over 4 radians. Uh, so we got a... Uh, gets a little trickier here. If you think uh, 90 degrees is a half, well, we're looking for one... So 90 degrees, that's this right here. That would be... One way to say that would be pi over 2. Well, I'm looking for... Well, the next question is, what is a 30 degree angle going to be? And that's essentially a third of a half pi, right? Because 30 degrees is a third of 90. So we would be saying that is pi over 6 radians. And that, so that would be right here. This would be 30 degrees, the same as pi over 6. And then the last one here, 60 degrees. What would that be equivalent to? Well, 60 degrees is twice as big as 30 degrees. So it would be twice as big as pi over 6. So that would be 2 pi over 6, but you're never going to see it written as 2 pi over 6 because we are going to reduce our fractions and call it pi over 3. The sooner you can get familiar with these benchmarks, the easier this chapter is going to become. There is absolutely no way around working with fractions in this chapter. All right, You're going to be working with halves, thirds, fourths, and sixths till your heart is content. All right. <clears throat> okay. So, obviously... I know you guys could tell me that this is between 0 and 90 degrees, but I'm not so concerned with, like, so you know everything in this first quadrant is between, every angle in that first quadrant is between 0 and 90 degrees. You could office. also tell me everything in quadrant 2 is between 90 and 180, and as you went on, the quadrant 3, 180 and 270, quadrant 4, 270 and 360. Those aren't the tough questions. The tough questions I want to ask are, Let's do it in radian measures. All right. In radian measures, we're not going to talk 0 to 90 anymore. We're going to talk 0 to pi over 2. All right. That's quadrant 1. Anything in that range is in quadrant 1. Both the pi over 6 and the pi over 3 that we talked about on the last slide, that was 30 degrees, that was right in here, that falls into 60 degrees. Same thing as pi over 3. Those fell into quadrant 1. Well, any value bigger than pi over 2, but smaller than pi, will fall into quadrant 3. Bigger than, I'm sorry. Bigger than pi over 2, smaller than pi, falls into quadrant 2. Uh, bigger than pi, but smaller than 3 pi over 2, falls into quadrant 3. And then in quadrant 4, you're going to have from 3 pi over 2, all the way up to one full revolution, 2 pi. So... We already know that our initial side is always going to be an arrow pointing to the right. And any angle drawn off it, well, it depends on its size, will fall into these four quadrants or possibly on what, either the x-axis or the y-axis. But we'll get into that uh, later on. All right, so earlier in this slide, we found that to, to get a coterminal angle, all we had to do was add one full revolution. Well, when we work in radians, we still add one full revolution, but in radians, a full revolution is not 360 degrees. A full revolution is 2 pi, so we can either add or subtract that to get a coterminal angle. So if you're thinking uh, 13 pi over 6, you may have no idea what that looks, at, looks like right now, but if I think, all right, approximately 6 goes into 13 twice, 2 and 1 sixth is another way to say this, right? 2 and uh, 1 sixth pi, right? 2, so that's one way to say it. Um, 2 and 1 sixth pi, yeah. 2 and 1 sixth pi. That's one way to say this. Um, if you were to draw that, this being your initial side, a full revolution gets to here. And then you'd be pi over 6 more. So that would be uh, approximately right around here. 
that would be approximately, um, it would fall into quadrant one. Now my question is, let's find a coterminal angle to this. Well, to find a coterminal angle, I go back to my 13 pi over 6. And I really either need to add 2 pi, which is possible not to add 2 pi, I need common denominators. So the best way to write that is going to be uh, plus 12 pi over 6. That's the same as 2 pi. 25 pi over 6 would be a coterminal angle. Now, is that the only correct answer? I'm hoping you're saying no, because I did not have to add that. I could have done something different. I actually could have subtracted that and gotten another coterminal angle, pi over 6. Now, we are already a little familiar with pi over 6 from previous slides. We know that falls in quadrant 1. So, uh, finding coterminal angles is really just a fancy way of saying, well, you either have to add 2 pi or subtract 2 pi. Uh, I'll let you uh, experiment on the second one, see if you can find some coterminal angles on your own. All right, so when we've talked about complementary, what you what you've learned in the past is that complementary angles add up to 90 degrees. Yes, that's still true, but we're going to start working in radians, which means complementary angles now add up to pi over 2. Why do I say that? Because pi over 2 is the same as 90 degrees. Supplementary angles, which you're, you hopefully remember, add up to 180 degrees. Well, now they add up to pi radians. So we can take this information and we can actually apply it. And I can say find the complement and the supplement of 2 pi over 5. Well, we're asking ourselves 2 pi over 5. If I'm going to find the complement first, we'll find the supplement later. 2 pi over 5 plus what is go So we can say plus x is going to equal... Uh, pi over 2. So if you're solving for x, it's really just subtract 2 pi over 5 to both sides, minus 2 pi over 5. So now I just need to get common denominators, and I would do uh, 5 pi over 10 minus uh, 4 pi over 10, and I would get an answer. Pi over 10 is the complement to 2 pi over 5. Well, if I had to find the supplement, it would work exactly the same way, uh, except this time, it's 2 pi over 5 plus x. This time I need to total up to pi. This one's a little easier to do on our heads. I think you probably can figure out that x equals 3 pi over 5 using reasoning from the previous problem. Uh, it's only a slightly different subtraction. All right. Uh, so what the only part that's tricky to this is... Um, Complements and supplements both have to be positive values. So if you were to set this up exactly the same way, um, 4 pi over 5, if you think, now, 4 fifths is more than a half. And we already know from uh, looking at our previous slides, this would be an angle pi over 2. That's 90 degrees. Right? 90 degrees falls in quadrant 1. If I'm more than a half, something like 4 fifths pi, it's going to be this angle measure right here, 4 pi over 5. 4 pi over 5, 4 pi over 5 falls in quadrant 2. Is it possible to have a complement of an obtuse angle? The answer is no, it's not possible. There is no complement here. We are going to be able to get a supplement, and the supplement here, uh, the supplement here, would be uh, pi over 5, because 1 pi, one fifth plus 4 fifths is 1 full pi. That one's a little bit easier. All right. All right, so two very important parts to our notes. To convert to from degrees to radians, it's a straightforward formula every time you multiply by pi over 180. If you are currently have a radian measure and you would rather be in degrees, you multiply by 180 over pi. 